Welcome back to WIPS Biochemistry and we meet again to discuss uh, uh, substrate level phosphorylation this time. Now before we uh, discuss substrate level phosphorylation, let us see what is a phosphorylation reaction. In chemistry or in uh, biochemistry, uh, this reactions, phosphorylation reactions are which add a phosphoryl group to a substrate. And uh, this uh, usually uh, the phosphoryl group comes from a substrate and more usually from ATP itself. And uh, when it is ATP, it mostly involves the kinase enzyme also. Now, one of the familiar reactions in glycolysis is shown here as an example, glucose giving glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of uh, hexokinase or glucokinase with the expenditure of an ATP here. So, this is an example for phosphorylation, that is transfer of phosphoryl group from a substrate. Now, when we, uh, when we say that phosphoryl group, it's not actually phosphate group that is transferred, it's a phosphoryl group. And what is the difference between phosphate uh, group and phosphoryl group you can see here? Now phosphate group is the one which is attached to a substrate, whereas phosphoryl group as shown here is the one which is transferred from a substrate to uh, ADP or uh, to uh, another substrate. Now, what is a substrate level phosphorylation? It is, a, it is the transfer of a phosphoryl group from a substrate to ADP so as to form ATP. So this is basically what termed what is termed uh, substrate level phosphorylation. Uh, we can see the structure of ATP here, ATP. So this terminal, this gamma phosphate group is which is added to ADP to give ATP. So this is a, a, a representative reaction. You can see here the, the substrate with phosphoryl group which is which is transferred to ADP so as to form ATP and the product is shown here. So this terminal phosphate group comes from the phosphoryl transfer of this substrate. Now basically uh, this is actually transferring from a high energy substrate into a lower energy product and this process uh, uses uh, some of the released chemical energy, the, the gives free energy to transfer the phosphoryl group from, uh, uh, from this particular substrate to ADP or GDP so as to form ATP or GTP respectively. Now let us see some of the uh, examples. Uh, this is from again glycolysis the reaction 7 which is a phosphoryl transfer from 1,3 biphosphoglycerate to ADP. So this is 1,3 biphosphoglycerate. It transfers this phosphoryl group to ADP so as to form ATP and the product 3-phosphoglycerate is shown here. Again, here also the kinase enzyme come into play, phosphoglycerate kinase. Another example is, again from glycolysis, reaction 10. Uh, this is actually a uh, transfer of a phosphoryl group from phosphoenol pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate here, the phosphoryl group here, which is transferred to ADP, so as to give ATP, and uh, the pyruvate here. This is the product. Again, pyruvate kinase is the uh, uh, the, the uh, enzyme involved in this reaction. Now, both of these processes occur uh, in cytoplasm. Another process that is occurring in mitochondria is shown here. This is TCA cycle. This example uh, of uh, substrate level phosphorylation is from TCA cycle. As you can see here, this, yeah, this, uh, this particular reaction, succinyl consume giving succinate is highlighted here. Succinyl coenzyme giving succinate in the presence of another kinase enzyme. Succinyl coenzyme thiokinase which gives GTP and obviously GTP is equivalent to ATP. So this again is an example for substrate level phosphorylation. Now uh, let us examine another process oxidative phosphorylation in chemiosmotic mechanism which is a, a much more elaborate mechanism for the generation of ATP. In fact 30 or 32 ATP are produced per glucose molecule. And uh, this uh, actually involves generation of uh, reduced molecules, namely NADH and FADH2 uh, through uh, metabolic processes. And uh, this, uh, these molecules are channeled to electron transport chain so as to create, uh, so as to create what is called electrochemical gradient of protons across in the mitochondrial membrane. And the energy of this uh, electron gradient, uh, electrochemical gradient, uh, is it is actually proton gradient also, electrochemical gradient or proton gradient. This is actually used for the synthesis of ATP using ATP synthase. And uh, uh, you can uh, watch uh, one of my earlier lectures on chemiosmotic mechanism and oxidative phosphorylation uh, using this link given. Now, in fact, uh, the, the advantage of substrate level phosphorylation is that uh, it is used for the synthesis of ATP, instant uh, production of ATP in, uh, for example, RBC, which is not having mitochondria or in uh, skeletal muscles during strenuous exercises. 
Now let us consider the case of phosphocreatin uh, acting as a molecule of ATP generation. Now phosphocreatin is stored in uh, working muscles or in brain as a source of readily available source of ATP or energy. Now phosphocreatin uh, can get converted to creatine and release energy. And uh, uh, this is uh, sometimes erroneously called a substrate level phosphor phosphorylation, but this is actually transphosphorylation. Transphosphorylation because the synthesis of uh, uh, phosphocreatin in mitochondria involves ATP. And uh, phosphocreatin, uh, when it is converted to creatine, it releases ATP, but there is no net uh, synthesis of ATP here. So that's why this is called transphosphorylation and not substrate level phosphorylation.